Hi everybody and welcome to Taking Your Classroom to the Next Level. I am Ryan Reed, your host. Well, coding is everything in early elementary these days, but some people always have a little problem going to come with coding. Of course, programs like Scratch Junior, Scratch, and Bebop work very well in coding. But did you know actually the whole Bugs and Buttons by 1-Bit Studio actually works perfect for coding? I'm here to tell you how you can get started and make your classroom buggy. Here are all the Bugs and Buttons series that are great for coding. We have Bugs and Buttons, Bugs and Buttons 2, Bugs and Bubbles, Bugs and Numbers, and of course, Bug Mazing. So let's go over the basics of where you can teach kids programming, motivation skills, as well as coding. So let's start with the original classic Bugs and Buttons. All from Little Bit Studio, of course. So Bugs and Buttons works out really well. Actually, you can right here is hit start and get your names going if you want to, and it'll take you by levels. But I'm going to show you some of the best parts of, of all the Bugs and Buttons series in the Explore tab of where you can use. Some of the ones that work best, of course, is for patterns right here. If I click on patterns, it will do the classic of assembling the patterns together. So in this case, I take my finger and find the correct pattern. This really teaches kids how to look into patterns and in that for coding because it teaches them later on with Scratch and Scratch Junior about exactly how they work together. As the levels go on, this gets more and more complicated. And also, it's going to time you about how many you get wrong and how many you get right. And I'll show you right now what happens, what happens when you get this wrong. And that's basically working for that. One that works very well is tic-tac-toe even. This allows students to actually think way as this dragonfly tries to play a game of tic-tac-toe with you. This teaches kids how to take care of patterns as well as thinking and coding aside. It might look simple, but tic-tac-toe actually does teach coding and programming patterns very well. Another one that's, of course, great is the Bug Mazing, which is the original design for the current app, which we'll get into later, as well as connecting the dots. It's pretty simple if you click on Bug Maze. This, of course, has it where you have to get an insect, usually an ant or a bee, to their side of food or water. The students, of course, have to draw out of their patterns to try to get through the maze to the corresponding item. This works really well teaching, of course, not only um, programming and patterns, but also how to figure out solutions and problems, which is all part of basic coding and programming. These are just some of the ones you can use in the original Bugs and Buttons that you can find, especially for matching and trains and letters, as well as simple controls in Butterfly Valley. So let's go into what Bugs and Buttons 2 can teach you in programming and coding. Bugs and Buttons 2 actually leads to a main character known as Monty who actually follows you throughout the game to do a search and find through all the different apps and all that through Bugs and Buttons 2. As you can see, Bugs and Buttons 2 has a little bit more higher standings with the same controls between start going through the whole game and exploring through the different ones. In exploring, of course, the best ones I have found that work great for coding, of course, are Button Count, Button Repair, Ant Herd, Music Match, which I talked about earlier, and I will talk about that later on with my Makey Makey, and of course, my favorite one, Puppet Show. So let's get into the first ones here. Let's go into Button Repair. 
Button repair is pretty simple. You have to put the buttons together and assemble them correctly as the instruction shows. Once you've assembled your buttons correctly, you will get everything together. You also have a little timer which actually counts down as you assemble the buttons. The faster you go, the harder this gets and the quicker the timer goes. If you look over to button count, it works very similar to the find the patterns in the original bugs and buttons. But in this case, you have to get your numbers correctly. Once the Zaboni machine has gathered up all the buttons, you have to get your patterns correctly depending on your numbers. So in this case, there are two buttons. So my answer, of course, should be two. two. This not only teaches patterns and counting, but also simple mathematics, which is great for students since math is all around us in coding. Moving on over to another one, of course, is my favorite, which is Music Match, which I will also talk about in a Makey Makey here coming up towards the end of the tutorial. But pretty much the bug comes and sings. La, la, la. La, la, la. <laughs> and you, of course, have to listen to the keys. And of course, repeat the number of keys that are played. Oops, Oops I got it wrong. Oh, there's Monty. Once you see him, you touch him, and you'll get different stamps, of course, for your book. So, another wonderful little sub game within the game itself is to get Monty going. And of course, Monty will rock and roll throughout the game. And he's off. Bye, Monty. If you're wondering, this is Baba Black Sheep. And once I complete the patterns and the music, of course, you get stars. The last one I actually want to show here before moving on to the next set, of course, here is Puppet Show. Puppet Show works great, especially if you're looking for simple identity of Simon Says, body parts for younger students, and of course how the various puppets work here within the game. It works as simple program encoding. As it says, touch the eye. And once you get the don't touch the eye, you have to wait until the count goes because if you don't do it correctly, you will get the answer wrong. And this goes on and on and on. These are some of my favorite games to try in Bugs and Buttons 2, which teaches children basic arithmetic, patterns, instruction, and motor skills, and great for programming code basics. I highly recommend Bugs and Buttons 2. Now, getting away from the Bugs and Buttons series and going to Bugs and Bubbles, Numbers, and Bug Mazing, I will show you the difference. In Bugs and Bubbles, instead of buttons, bubbles have replaced all the main parts of the buttons part of bugs. Bugs are still a huge part in Bugs and Bubbles, but you have the bubbles that works better with patterns and math and motor skills. So if you're looking for more patterns and programming, I highly recommend doing Bugs and Bubbles. In the Explore feature, one that's actually the best one to work, of course, is Patterns, Matching Bubbles, Shape Stacker, and of course, Racing, because this allows you to do simple codes. Now, I'm going to go right into one of them right here with the matching.
So you have to find your pattern. So in this case, this is a number sequence. So it's one, two, three, four. As the game goes on, it's not going to just do numbers. It's actually going to do colors as well. So it's pretty interesting to check those all out. In bug racing, you have a set of three different bugs that actually play. And as you can see, you have the control here as you have to get each of your different bugs and insects to race. And each one is different depending on it. In this case, it's an ant. So I have to hit my two keys on the bottom with my two fingers to make them run. This teaches kids motivation as well as control but also how that they don't follow sequence A to B, they can't make their bugs race and win the race. It's pretty interesting. And if you also want to check into another one, which is very interesting, I would check out math scales because it teaches weight and dimensions instead of coding, but it's really great for math students. You can explore every other ones in Bugs and Bubbles and find out what works for your classroom. Moving on to Bugs and Numbers, which is designed to work more with mathematics in Bugs. The ones I highly recommend here are, of course, the Junkyard, which allows you to do a fine in play, as well as the hotel matching shapes. Another one that's also great here is Boat Dock and Theater Comparison, because this teaches difference between contrast and comparison, as well as school for numbers and shapes. I'm going to go right now into Theater Comparisons as an example. Of course, once the audience shows up and you get a little cheering of bugs, it will open up the curtains and you'll be off to your different letter. Which is shorter? <laughs> of course, that straw is shorter. This really teaches the difference for students between size and comparison, contrast, as well as the game goes on, different types of patterns, which of course are huge in coding. The last one I'm going to show you is of course the claw. Claw is actually great for counting and change. There are a lot of students these days that don't quite understand how money works. In this case you get a classic claw studio which actually asks you how much money needs to grab an item. So you need to take your different changes and put them in the coin slot in order to get the correct amount. So in this case I need five. So I can take more than one too. And now it's asking for two cents. Once you've reached up to your meter here, you'll be able to get a prize out of the machine. This teaches basic counting and coinage for money for students. This is actually a great way for math lessons for consumer math in early elementary. If only I could do this well, the claw machine at the pizzeria. Getting into the final Bugs and Buttons game, we're going to go into Bug Mazing. Bugs Mazing is actually based off the original level in the first Bugs and Buttons. But in this case, it's actually an adventure where it teaches patterns, cold, and problem solving for students. in a kind of Indiana Jones adventure. Welcome to Bug Mazing. And as you can see, there's different ones here from tracing the colors to numbers and to letters. I'm actually going to go into letters today. As Monty, our wonderful explorer, they explain how the game works as well as your timing. So in this case, the pattern is just to find your alphabet. So you have to trace the pattern in the correct... And after you complete each level, it gets you out of the maze to continue. And it's going to give you a little alphabet about how to... A, B, C, E, F, G, H, I, J, L, M, N, O, 
And as you can see, as you go on, you get different kinds of reward tokens. Like I said, very Indiana Jones. That's the entire Bugs and Buttons series. Besides Bugs and Buttons, there's a great way to incorporate Scratch into your classroom using a Makey Makey and make your own bug piano. The truth is to take your own Play-Doh with a little bit of Teach Like a Pirate and everything and create your own bug creations for your classroom. When each student's finished with each one, you can plug them into the Makey Makey, set up your coding in Scratch, and of course have a bug piano. This works great with Bugs and Buttons too, piano music assortment, as well as bugs and numbers between the number keys and music. It's a great way to do your classroom and get it coding and buggy. Hope you've enjoyed this installment of Take Your Classroom to the Next Level. I'll see everybody next time so we can keep on coding and keep on building.